Good afternoon. My name is Matt Hayashi. I am the CEO of Cannabis Clearwater. Today we are going to talk about the CBD market and how the FDA affects the CBD market in the United States. But before we begin, I want to talk about a brief history of cannabis policy with respect to the FDA. Between 1840 and the 1900s, cannabis was legal and used medicinally and recreationally in the United States. It was around 1860 when cannabis became uh, scrutinized and there were possible negative effects, thus having the first commission study to study cannabis. Recreation cannabis use began in the 20th century and by 1914, the Harrison Act enacted thus declaring cannabis use a crime. By 19, uh, 1956, cannabis was included in the Federal Narcotics Act and then by 1970, marijuana was categorized as Schedule I for both CBD and THC under the Controlled Substance Act of 1970. Bring it up to 2018, a farm bill that was passed to remove CBD under the Schedule I. However, that being said, THC is still considered illegal uh, from a federal perspective. For CBD, no more than 0.3% of THC on dry weight from the definition of marijuana in the Controlled Substances Act, which means anything less than 0.3% can be used uh, for a CBD product. 2022, President Biden called on the Secretary of Health and Human Services and Attorney General to review the scheduling of cannabis under the federal law. We will talk about that later on. Now, I want to briefly touch about the structures, the chemical structures of CBD and THC. As you realize, there are uh, 21 carbon atoms, 30 hydrogen atoms, and two oxygen atoms for both CBD and THC. It's the structure, how they are differentiated. These carbon rings um, are different. And depending on when they are harvested, will ultimately determine whether or not you want a CBD or a THC, okay? THC is a psychoactive compound. CBD is a non-psychoactive compound and with over 500 uh, chemical entities for this structure. Now, currently FDA uh, for CBD products, FDA has regulated and made it a mandate, make it mandatory for any CBD products they must be tested, okay? They must be tested. Regardless of what state you're in, FDA is mandating mandating a uh, regulated testing on all cannabis products, CBD. That includes tinctures, that includes uh, edibles, um, uh, any type of lotions, everything needs to be tested. Through ISO um, 17025 labs, and they must report their findings to the state. Now, the reason they are doing that, as you can see here, the amount of money that is being spent in uh, between 2022 up to 2026, as the forecast suggested, are millions and millions of dollars. Okay? This is a billion dollar industry worldwide, and the government um, wants to make sure that these products do not harm people. That is the role of the FDA. So they have implemented these uh, regulatory testings for CBD products. As you can see here, this is the meat, uh, CBD market today, uh, 2022. This is in millions, 41.50 in 2022, uh, 2023, 43.50, projected uh, 4,400 in 2024, and so on. So the numbers here seem to suggest that there is a demand for all CBD products. Here, leading reasons why U.S. adults use CBD as of 2022. Um, the, as you can see here, the number one reason is to reduce stress and relax. We are at a time when people have a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress in their life, and they take a CBD, an oral CBD, to help reduce their stress. The second reason is to relieve pain. Scientists have shown that certain um, modalities
can relieve pain any kind of tincture CBD lotions they've been shown to reduce pain so that's the second reason why the third reason to improve quality sleep and then the fourth reason to alleviate that anxiety that's one of the reasons why people uh, the US adults have been uh, taking CBD now the fifth one we have seen it increase especially within um, the United States particularly in California New York Colorado doctors suggest as a medical intervention or treatment not all states in the United States legalize uh, marijuana or um, cannabis it has been used from a legal perspective for medicinal purposes the doctors are suggesting to use these medical interventions or CBD to help alleviate some of these anxieties and these other modalities okay uh, another reason is recreational curiosity and there are other reasons but the top three reasons why US adults use CBD as of 2022 reduce stress and relax relieve pain and improve sleep uh, quality now going back to 1985 there was a drug clearance there were a lot of um, you know it was a new thing at the time and uh, pharmaceutical companies had been doing their research here we see 1985 drug product called Marinol was approved right and this is from a cannabis based uh, pharmaceutical pharmaceutical drug indications were cancer preventing nausea vomiting uh, and evidence if you go down to the bottom here let me see if I can move my cursor if you go down to the bottom here this is the latest Epidiolex in 2018 the FDA cleared and approved this CBD drug okay this is new and there are more clinical studies which you'll see on the next slide that are uh, coming down the pipeline so as of 2018 uh, there are a lot of cannabis uh, clinical trials with respect to the FDA and it takes about eight to ten years for an FDA to approve a drug these chemical uh, these I'm sorry these pharmaceutical companies are waiting such as Pfizer um, Sanofi GW pharmaceuticals have put in a lot of money into these uh, cannabinoid clinical trials hoping to get a really good result and be cleared by the FDA within the next 10 years these are current trials that are happening now now going back to President Biden's request to do the investigation on the schedule one there are uh, differences between a scheduled one and a scheduled three what are these things in the United States a schedule one is drugs with no currently accepted medical use and a high potential for abuse they are most dangerous drugs of all the drug schedules with potentially severe psychological and physical dependence the list of examples of a scheduled one drug are heroin LSD marijuana ecstasy meth and peyote these are examples of scheduled one drugs Schedule two are drugs with a high potent potential for abuse with the use of potentially leading to severe psychological and physical dependence. These drugs are also considered dangerous. Combination, uh, these examples of cocaine, methamphetamines, methadone, um, hydromorphone, and oxycodone, uh, fentanyl, these are all considered schedule two drugs. And then number three, the schedule three, drugs with a moderate to low potential for physical and psychological dependence scheduled three drugs abuse potential is less than scheduled one and scheduled two drugs but more than scheduled four examples of that are ketamine antibiotic steroids and testosterone and uh, products containing less than 90 milligrams of codeine so in schedule three ketamine antibiotic steroids uh, testosterone you can get them they are legal to get from a prescription perspective they are readily available 
okay? Schedule one drugs, they are considered illegal and they do not, um, they're not accepted as medical use. Okay. Those are the big distinctions. So what do we do? What are we talking about here? President Biden has uh, given the task to the Health and Human Services and Attorney General to review cannabis to see if uh, cannabis should be considered a Schedule One drug. We do know the fact that uh, in a letter that was recommended to take uh, cannabis off of Schedule One and move it to Schedule Three. Okay, what does that mean? Well. A couple things um, from a state perspective state governed cannabis laws are still in place okay that is from a state perspective from a federal perspective cannabis would still be federally illegal nonetheless providing significant benefits to the industry some of these benefits include that the cannabis industry would be able to have tax relief for deductions for all businesses in the cannabis space and would no longer apply to that federal tax code section 280e that's a big uh, a big change if in the event that this does change to schedule three the tax relief and deductions can be applied to any business in the cannabis space right now no one in the cannabis space can do that they cannot deduct anything okay that's the big difference number two it can open up to more research and development capabilities a lot of the pharmaceutical companies would be able to do more research as well as uh, your local and municipal scientific research would be able to um, they would be able to do more research on cannabis studies and as well as your local colleges out here in the united states number three lighter criminal uh, criminal penalties for cannabis related violations President Biden has made an order to relinquish, uh, to pardon a lot of the uh, criminals who were vi uh, in, in jail who violated the cannabis laws. And he is sending an order to, um, to relinquish those, uh, those penalties. So, and then number four, new source of capital and possible small banking loans to cannabis businesses. In the event that cannabis does get moved to schedule three there is a possibility that cannabis companies would be able to get a small business loan not from an fdic like your bank of america your chase your american express however the the smaller banks are able or your um your uh, local banks credit unions they may be able to uh, give out small business loans in the event that FDA does reclassify cannabis to Schedule 3. One of the important things that you have to realize, FDA has a power to keep cannabis on the Schedule 1. They hear the recommendations from Health and Human Services. They hear the recommendations from uh, the Senate as well as Congress. But ultimately, the final decision comes down from the FDA. They make the final decision. It looks like that based off of what we've seen in the past couple months, the FDA is going to reclassify cannabis to a schedule three. We do not know when that is going to happen. It may happen as in early as December of 2023, up to six months, up to a year. We just don't know. We really don't know, but it is encouraging to see that cannabis would be moved to schedule three. That is my presentation. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to contact me. And thank you so much. It's been a pleasure.